I am delighted for our um, next fireside chat to get started. The, the fellows had their chance, and now, you know, the ladies are going to be doing our thing. I wish we could sit close and do a little kiki, you know, get together. But um, so we are talking about finding and using your influence as athletes in sports that are often less visible. We have A.J. Andrews, who's a, a professional softball player, uh, an outfielder who's won the gold glove. She's played in Akron. She's played in Houston. She's um, just completed her season in Italy. And she's also a motivational speaker promoting women in athletics and, and young black women. So thank you. And thanks so much. And we have the shot put diva, Miss Michelle Carter, three-time Olympian, the reigning um, Olympic shot put champion uh, the, uh, from 2016 in Rio, the first African-American woman to ever win a gold medal. The first American woman The first American woman to, first win. American woman to ever win a gold medal. Yes, 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 in shot put. Yes. So all of that, just a lot of first, a lot of historic, a lot of competing in spaces that don't always get the visibility. So that's what I wanted to talk about. How are you able to cover ground? How are you able to find your leverage, or find your influence, leverage it, you know, extend it? Um, what does that even look like? As I say, particularly in sports that aren't as uh, visible. So, so AJ, with, with you, how, how have you been able to find your lane? I create my lane, honestly, because when it comes down to playing professional softball, it's definitely not a sport that gets the visibility that I would hope it would, that many women that play softball would hope it would. We don't get the recognition that Major League Baseball players get. So me being the very first woman to win a Rollins Gold Glove, you would expect that it would get a lot more coverage than it did. But it was almost, in my opinion, felt really dismissed. Um, it just, the Major League Baseball players, when they win, they get an entire ESPN production. I got to have like a, maybe a three minute video on YouTube to talk about me winning. And this was a historic moment, not just for softball, but for women in sports in general. Right now, young women that play softball can aspire to be a gold glove winner. But before 2016, that was impossible. And for me, when it comes down to creating my lane for influence, it is being loud about my success. And, you know, sometimes I feel like maybe I'm talking about it too much or maybe, you know, I'm harping on it. But in reality, it is something that should be told. It's a story that should be told. And if other people aren't going to pick up that narrative, I'm going to write my own. I love that. And I love that you're talking about being loud about your success when that carries so much stigma for women. Right? right? To, to be loud as a woman, to be sort of front facing, to, to be your own advocate, and to be a young African American woman doing that as well. Uh, tell me a little bit about how, how some of that works and, and you've been able to sort of navigate that. I definitely think when, as women, when, we're, when we achieve something, right, and we're given a prize, it's like, okay, be happy for that, right? We acknowledged you a little bit, go ahead and sit down and be happy for what you got when in reality, we deserve so much more. We do just the same work, we put in the same hard work just as men, we put in those overtime hours, we put our body under distress. Anything that you wanna congratulate or celebrate a man doing, we do these same exact things. And we have more pressure to be good. We have more pressure to look a certain way while we're doing these things. Men, you, they can just be successful athletes. We have to be successful female athletes while also looking pretty or also having this certain aesthetic in order to get the attention that we should have just gotten from, from our athletic ability. And so for me, I just, it's not enough just for you to say, oh, good job, AJ. It's like, no, AJ, what you did was spectacular. You deserve to get the praise. You deserve to be that person that allows other people behind you that are now able to get the award to have a lane to get the praise that they deserve as well. And I just, not accepting, right, not accepting status quo. I think in order for not just softball, but women in sports in general to finally get what we deserve, we have to demand it. And, and to leverage that, right, to get for your next. And, mm -hmm. and, and so, Michelle, pick up on what AJ was saying with regard to you being this uh, Olympic champion and everything that went into it. Have you seen 
uh, the same kind of love come back? And how have you been able to establish yourself as, as this Olympic champion, as someone yeah. who has this presence, you know, to, to go out there and, and do your thing? I feel like the best thing to do is be yourself. Because when you're authentically yourself, people notice that and people see themselves in you. So for me growing up, um, when I started doing the shot put in seventh grade, by the time I got to high school, when I could finally get my nails done, put on a little bit of makeup, a little lip gloss, I'm like, yes, like, this is what I'm supposed to do. And when I got to college, of course, the makeup progressed and I was just being myself because I was that girl who would get all dolled up, but I would also wrestle you in the playground, don't play with me. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so I just always wanted to be myself. So I carried that into my sport because I couldn't deny half of who I was when half of me is this girly girl, but I throw this heavy ball in some dirt and I'm really good at it. <laughs> and so for me, um, kind of like when you mentioned Shot Diva, like that's my handle, that's kind of like my persona because I am this diva, but I throw the shot put and that's all of who I am. And um, I never wanted to deny a part of me. So what made me different and what made me stand out and what I realized what people were noticing about me was that in a sport, in my sport, shot put, when people think of shot put, they think of somebody named Olga. <laughs> we all know who Olga looked like. And so that's what they would think about women shot putters until they saw me. They was like, oh, but you're pretty for a shot putter. And I'm like, oh, wow. Like, OK, so this is a thing. Right, I, I was like, and like wait, is that it's even a thing? thing? It's, a, it's a thing, because you know, I came in high school before we had the internet. So people had to look up the results in the newspaper. And people were like, oh, so you're the girl that throws, like, you're, you're really cute. I'm like, well, thank you. But, um, but just being yourself, and that's what I was able to do. I was able to be myself, and it freed me up. But then when I came professional, I did get the side eye from my um, opponents. Like, oh, so she cute. She thinks she cute. She ain't about to win. Like, she's not going to throw far. And it did make me second guess. Like, should I do this? Because they not looking like me, and I don't look like them, but they're actually doing better than me. But then I was like, no, Michelle, like, be true to who you are. What makes you happy? So me getting my hair done, getting my nails done, doing my makeup before competing, that's me getting ready for work. Right. I'm putting my best foot forward. And this is what I do to get myself ready. And it builds my confidence. Because I know when I step in that ring, I don't have to worry about my hair. I don't have to worry about what I look. I know what I look like. I fixed it before I left. <laughs> and I'm free to be me in that moment. And I think that's what I've been able to do and what I get the feedback from people. That's what they tell me what they like about me um, and what they um, noticed about me. And that's just from me being myself. And I love that, that that's part of your authenticity. This is what you do to enable yourself to get in the right headspace to create, right? And so you also um, have the um, You Throw Girl. Yeah. Talk about that a little bit, because if we're talking about influences and, and leveraging and you know how you uh, affect other people, talk yeah. about this notion that you're telling other female athletes that you can do this and that. You don't have to be limited. Because yes. um, I feel like as, as women, we always have to choose. We only could be one thing. People don't really like to see us do more than one thing. But I have a camp called You Throw Girls Sports Confidence Camp. And it's for young female athletes from junior high to high school. And we build and pour into them to be the best they can be on and off the field. So not only do we have our sports sessions, we have um, self-defense class. We have um, goal setting and vision board. We do etiquette classes. We prepare them how to present themselves in interviews because track and field has um, opened many doors for me. I started traveling the world when I was in 10th grade because I was good at throwing the shot put. And so I want these young girls to have the opportunity to experience all these different things that they may not get at school or they may not get certain training or be exposed to it, but we expose them to them and build up their confidence and give them these skills. These skills not only work on the field, but they can take these skills off the field and, um, and build something for them that's unique just for them. Because we're going into the time where you need like not just one job, you need kind of multiple jobs these days and just leverage who you are and um, be confident in that. And I think that's the big thing. Like, you want to be confident in who you are, no matter what field, no matter what you do. Because if you don't believe in yourself, it's hard for everybody else to get on board with you. AJ. Absolutely.
when you're doing your motivational speaking, mm -hmm. what is your message as an influencer, as someone who's standing in the gap for these underrepresented sports? What is your message to, to young Mine women? Mine is basically that you can truly be whatever it is you want to be and to never allow barriers to keep you down, uh, to be a barrier breaker because one of the main things that I like to stand on is the fact that before 2016, right, no woman could dream to be a gold glove winner. And from 2016 on, now that's something that people can dare to dream about. And so just the fact that whatever it is that you want to do, whether you feel like it is attainable, you still need to go for those goals. And if that door isn't opening for you, then you have to kick it down, basically. Just really work toward being exactly who you are, being authentic, being able to demand what it is that you want in this world if some man is what's keeping you from getting it. When you, <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> okay. <laughs> when you talk about kicking down the door, like how does that operationalize? What does that look like? What are some of the specific things Especially since you guys are not only competing for your now, you're trying to um, look forward to what your career will be, where you'll have influence after sports. So, so, so walk me through that, either of you. AJ, um, give me a sense of the, the specifics of, of some of those Knocking things. Knocking down doors? Yeah. I would say when it comes to knocking down doors and knocking down barriers that are faced in front of you, you just have to go head on. Uh, I think every no is getting you closer to a yes, right? You can't allow that to stop you in your tracks from what you want to do. One of my favorite things is that I like to tell kids that I work with is failure is only opportunity to more intelligently begin again, right? You cannot know what it is you need to do to move forward if you do not at first fail. Uh, failure needs to be something that you accept, that you hone in, almost embrace, right? Me knowing that I failed this time, I know what I need to do in order to prevail ahead. And you telling me this no is only going to make me work harder to find another route to get where I want to be, right? This may have been some the route, the path that I thought would get me there, but you're only going to allow me to work harder because come smarter, learn more in order to get around that no, and you're going to be the one that's going to force, be forced to celebrate me once I reach my yes. How about that? So, so Michelle, same question for you. How do you, how do you represent, how do you customize, how do you do what you need to be the Olympic champion now, but also look forward to having that, um, that, that promise of that next thing you're looking forward to, yeah. incorporating your faith in it maybe? Yeah. Um, what does uh, that I look like? I would say execute with excellence. Because um, when you become really good at what you do, people take notice. And if you stay consistent and you're excellent, because you can't be good one day and then you like at an A today, then the next time you see you at a C, then you at a B, and then you actually at a D minus. Like when you're out there, you're doing what you do, put forth the A plus effort every single time. And that's how you can knock down a door because if I never showed up for my practices consistently, if I didn't um, learn from the times when I did have a bad meet and tried to get better from that, like I just kept trying and kept pushing, I kept pushing myself. And that's how I was able to really break down the barriers, not just in my sport, but also in myself, in my own mind. Because I think that's the biggest barrier we have because half the time we second, we second guess ourselves. And when you second guess yourself, you can never break down the barrier to let other people go through if you can't break down the barrier for yourself. But then how do people see you? Do you engage in social media? What is the primary way where somebody feels like, I can reach out and touch you. If she's doing it, I can do it. If AJ's doing it, I can do it. How, how do you spread that message for people that can't be person to person? Well, yeah, uh, definitely social media. That's the one thing we have today that can you could have a message sitting here like this is, is going to be seen worldwide. You know, because you could just click a button and anybody can see it. So sharing that message on Instagram, um, one thing I do like to do after a competition, no matter how I did, I give my pros and my cons, like what happened, what, you know, what was I thinking, what I need to work on for the next time, and kind of walking people what I walked through to get myself to the next level so they can see what that looks like. And that feels like an intimacy. And you, yeah. you've been uh, sort of supported in that. You said um, that parents have come up to you or have said yeah. things or communicated with you in social media about yeah. the inspiration that you so, provide. Um, funny story, Corey Carter, she is a professional 800 meter runner today. 
And when she first went pro, the first thing she said to me, she was like, oh my gosh, Michelle Carter, we're cousins in my head because we have the same last name. And when I was growing up, when I was in middle school, my dad pointed out to you on the TV and was like, look what she's doing. And she's, you know, she, she's very confident and she's a bigger brown girl and she can wear makes up makeup and she looks like a woman, but she's also really good at what she does. Like, this is who you need to watch. And I was like, Corey, you just made me feel old because you said you was in junior high <laughs> and I was already professional, but besides that. <laughs> but it was like in that moment, um, for her that meant something, even though we weren't even in the same event, but she saw something, her parents saw something like, hey, watch her, because if you want to be great, she has some qualities about her that you can gain from. And I think that's what the, thing, the, uh, the main thing is, like no matter what um, realm of influence you have, someone's always watching you from your, your siblings, the person next door, the person who always sees you walk this one way to class every single day. That's what people are watching you in your everyday things to take cues on how they should live their life. Watching and learning. AJ, for yeah. you, how do you um, sort of spread that word for people that can't come out and hear your speeches? What do you do either both in social media and how do you just sort of get that notion out there that, that how you walk the world? I think being very accessible is something that I really like to do. So, you know, social media, when people reach out to me, I try to reach out back out as much as I possibly can. Um, being able to do, I do Wisdom Wednesdays on Instagram at times and really just kind of letting people hear what it is that allowed me to be successful, right? The things that I had to go through in order to have my breakthrough, right? The fact that you are not alone, the fact that you see success, right? I think social media can be so tricky because you're watching someone's highlight reel. You don't really get to see the hard work and the behind the scenes and that they put, put that in. in there? I do. And I want to make sure that it's it's authentic, it's real, it's something that, oh, AJ, I wish I had your life. It's like, no, you need to do your life. I want to be I want to be someone that is a guide, not a goal, right? I don't want you to look at me and say, I want to be AJ Andrews. I want to be, I want to get to what she's doing. I like to what she is. I'm going to use her as a guide to be the most authentic and the best me. And so whatever I can do, whether it's on social media, I like to do camps as well with kids so that I can actually have that opportunity to speak with them face to face. And just whatever it is I can say to allow them to feel like they can be the best them and really flourish as an athlete and as a person in their own life, rather looking at these people that they see on social media or on TV as that's who I want to be. And then if I understand correctly from having uh, spoken with you all, that sets you up for whatever you want to do next because it's been authentic in this moment as you're going through the journey as you're the professional athlete with the spotlight on it so then it's more of a bridge instead of just a leap into this next thing right yeah. uh, i would say uh, winning the gold in 2016 definitely opened up many doors for me i was having speaking engagements and being in, invited to all kind of places that i didn't even know existed but it was just an amazing opportunity that something that I work for, work hard for, and was being my very best and opened so many doors and allowed me to not just um, make my life better, but to encourage others. Right. Which, is, yeah. which, is, which is exactly what influence is. And so thank you, ladies. Um, thank this you. has just been inspirational even for me, too. Let me go. Shop for it. Gold glove, all of it. So thank you very much. Thank you.